For decades, conventional wisdom held that most homeschooling parents were fundamentalist Christians who taught their kids at home so they could reinforce their beliefs. But even if that were true 20 years ago, it isn't anymore. Now, there are almost 1.8 million kids who are being homeschooled across the country. Joining us from Boston is Heather Doney. She grew up in a homeschooling family and has co-founded Homeschooling's Invisible Children, a website that documents dozens of tragic cases of kids who were while homeschooled. Also joining us from Boston is Pat Faranga. He runs the John Holt GWS website and he has authored several books about homeschooling. Thank you both for being with us tonight. Thank Heather, uh, before we get to talk about the broad picture in the U.S. today, I'd like to hear about your, ex your experience. Uh, you were homeschooled, and while you've gone on to graduate school, you've said that your eight siblings are mostly illiterate and you were abused by your parents. Um, well, not exactly. I'm the oldest in a family of ten, and my siblings are actually, everyone's doing very well today, but things could have very easily gone in a, in a different direction. Um, I was uh, at I was old until age 14, um, but things changed when I turned 12 years old and I called my grandparents and asked them for help and they did help us. Before then, my parents had registered as a, a private school in South Louisville, which homeschoolers can do, and we turned, they turned in the paperwork once and then no one ever checked on us again and I was the only one of us to learn how to read. I didn't know how to tell time on a clock with hands or what months came before others or like a lot of very basic things. And I spent a lot of my time uh, doing childcare and helping with a family business. And when I ended up going and being put in public school afterwards, I did very well. I graduated with honors, graduated from college with honors. My siblings are all doing very well today, everyone, but I think what it was is I thought that this was more just my experience and just a few other people I knew. And it was when I was in graduate that I started researching homeschooling and realized that the kind of loophole that allowed my family to fall through the cracks exists in a lot of places around the country. And, and um, we'll, Ten states are completely deregulated. Right, and we'll talk more about that in a minute. Pat, I want to you mm -hmm. chose to homeschool your kids. They've all gone on to college. Why did you mm -hmm. make the choice to not have them go to public school? Well, first of all, I wound up working with a man named John Holt, who started Growing Without Schooling magazine in 1970, a secular corporation, I have to add. And um, so, so to speak, I guess we're the first people on the block with that. But he was a, a teacher who uh, changed his attitudes about school because he, as he said, I teach, don't learn. And at, the more he investigated it, he realized it's because school was quashing children's uh, innate abilities to learn. Um, their self-directed learning that they do before they go to school was very impressive to Holt and he worked with that. And when I came into the company in 81, I was a single guy and I thought his ideas were pretty crazy. <laughs> I was just there to learn some word processing skills and get out. Yeah, because but his ideas were beyond homeschooling. He believed in unschooling, which is, uh, it doesn't mean no schooling at all. It means more sort of uh, naturalistic learning. Well, yes, thank you. Um, he didn't like the term homeschooling because the learning he was talking about didn't have to take place at home and it didn't have to look like school. In fact, his whole idea is based on the way children learn before school. is like they have ex free, ex free exposure to the world and they ask a lot of questions. <laughs> you know, and that kind of gets reversed in school. Now, Heather, you brought up the, the issue of lack of regulation. You founded a website, Homeschooling's Invisible Children, to call attention to the lack of regulations on homeschooling and what's happening to some of these kids. What do you think needs to happen to the industry? Um, well, I think that homeschooling is a perfectly legitimate educational option, and it should be available. But like in, with any other educational method, you have the haves and the have-nots. And one of the issues with the theory of change with homeschooling is that you give, the idea is you give the parents freedom and then the parents will give the children freedom and that it'll lead to high quality education. But it doesn't always work that way. There's a, a number, I mean, too many people will end up using homeschooling as a way to, to control or indoctrinate their children. Mm -hmm. And because there aren't any protections in, in a lot of states, um, you can have homeschooling be used as a cover for abuse or neglect. Like if a child's being found with bruises at school, 
the parents will pull the child out of school and homeschool them, and then the child doesn't have accusatory reporters. And there are pat so that's there that's are, one of the issues. Yeah, there are pat uh, there are a lot of documented cases of abuse, including a case from Florida, where a little girl named Nubia was allegedly badly abused by her adoptive parents. She died. Her twin brother was found in critical condition after being doused with chemicals. The boy was found in bad shape, along with his sister's body, in their adoptive father's truck. Now, red flags had been raised by a series of people, but then Nubia was taken out of school supposedly to be homeschooled nobody was around mm -hmm. to no call attention to their plight but mm -hmm. I know you told one of our producers that uh, and I'm mm -hmm. quoting here that to regulate homeschooling because it's going to stop child abuse is the wrong argument why right I think as Heather has described that the more an issue of parenting than it is an issue of education um, home child abuse happens in the home whether the children are in school or not it's just I mean, that's the way it is, and it's unfortunate. And but, but if kids are in school, the point is that at least some teachers could see indications of abuse and could call attention to but, it. Yes, we know, but we know that that doesn't work 100%. I don't even know what percentage it does work. I mean, pediatricians are also mandatory reporters. Not all these cases get caught. Um, and the fact is that you know Heather's family and uh, many of the families that, that she describes on the website are religiously motivated. They're not coming from a point of view of trying to help children learn and grow in the world. They're trying to protect them from the world. And um, these, you know, and that's why I say it's a parenting issue. They're not, they're not reading John Holt. They don't ask me to come down and talk to <laughs> them. Um, anything I've been. Pretty, you know, and John Holt have been pretty vilified by the religious right, um, you know. For and and years. there are there are certainly some very extreme situations where, uh, you know, there's a book that has gotten more than half a million people to buy it, where it advocates whipping children even when they're months old, and some mm -hmm. very extreme treatment of women too. So I mm -hmm. know there is that, that issue on the on the fringes, but the reality is that homeschooling, Heather, has gotten increasingly popular. It's growing like by leaps and bounds. In 2012, the most recent numbers show that three. 3.4 percent of kids in the U.S. were homeschooled. That's almost 1.8 million of them. Mm -hmm. uh, there are big businesses involved, including private and public online schools, including laurelsprings.com, k12.com. Now, this is far from just religious parents anymore. It has become very popular for young athletes and musicians who need flexible schedules because it allows them to, to you know, to train at their mm -hmm. what they hope will be their their trade. Uh, mm -hmm. Heather, it can be good for a lot of people. Well, um, yes, I think it can be good for a lot of people, and there are many different. There are several different subsets of ho of the homeschooling movement. Pat had addressed that. There's the unschooling side. There's the charter school stuff that you'd mentioned, and there is the fundamentalist Christian side, and that actually isn't a small group at all. They don't represent everyone, but they're actually very politically powerful. The Homeschool Legal Defense Association is one of the premier homeschool advocacy organizations in this country. So they and really help set the agenda. They're helping deregulate. They they're have, helping create the environment mm -hmm. where children can fall through the cracks. Yeah, and they have advocated against. So, they've advocated against uh, background checks for the parents to check and see if they weren't on child yes. abuse registries before mm -hmm. before they homeschool. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it, I don't understand that, Pat. I don't understand. Why? I, I don't understand that either, Antonio. Um, in, in the book Teach Your Own, in 1981, John Holt wrote that that would be a reasonable thing to do, <laughs> have background checks. Uh, just, you know, see if they have a quarry report or something like that associated with them. Well, we have a viewer question. Let's go to Hermela for that. Hermela. Thanks, Antonio. Pat, Jeff Wise on Twitter asks, does homeschooling mm -hmm. children of social interaction? Well, as Heather's experience shows, it can, but as my experience and the experience of the vast majority of homeschoolers, no, because we're not using the home to isolate our children. We're simply using the home as a, of operation to let our children go out into the world, have opportunities, use the uh, museums and, and all the uh, uh, opportunities that are out there. Heather, you want to say something? I, th I think that uh, a lot of it, it, it depends on the type of family. I know within like the fundamentalist Christian environment, there is a lot of issues uh, with socialization outside of the conservative Christian bubble being an issue, and there is also a serious problem with being isolated within the home. So it really depends on the individual homeschool. It depends. Often, if the parents are sort of shy, reserved people, they might not be the type that are taking their child out mm -hmm. to go to museums and to go join group sport that, mm -hmm. and the child can 
end up spending a lot of time at home by themselves mm -hmm. reading books. So it really mm -hmm. just depends. I think that like socialization is important for homeschool kids and some of them can do great and some of them can do terrible and suffer from debilitating social anxiety when when they get older it just that's the thing it really depends on what the parents are doing and yeah. i know pat mm -hmm. had said earlier that it's a parenting issue but really it's also a schooling issue so yeah. i don't think that we can divide those things and, and pat to be like fair that. some mm -hmm. there's not enough to studies out there we only have about 30 seconds left but some studies do show that homeschooling kids do better on standardized testing than public school kids unschooling kids there's some studies that show they don't do necessarily as well some colleges now have become more accepting do you think homeschooling is going to become more the norm in years to come and i've got all about 20 seconds left uh, short um, answer, so yeah. I'll let Pat answer that. Go ahead. <laughs> yes, yes, it, it is going to increase. I don't think it's going to be be the norm. One does it at all. But I think with distance learning, with uh, learning centers and more democratic schools and, and different opportunities and all the different alternatives to school um, that, that are out there, yeah. uh, I, I think it's... And I know Heather hopes that there will be more regulation and that kids will be monitored a little more carefully, that there is too little regulation out there. Uh, we will keep our eyes on yes. this. Pat, Heather, really appreciate you guys joining us tonight.